My name is Amanda Dumlin, and today we'll talk about the Open Science Framework. Here's a quick roadmap of what I'll be covering today, talking about what OSF is, why it's important, and then I'll get into how to pre-register. So what is OSF and why is it important? In recent years, there's been a movement toward open access. This includes things like open education, such as free open source textbooks, open source programs like R and Jamovi, and open science. The purpose of the open science movement is to increase the transparency and accessibility of science. As I'm sure you all know, accessing articles can be a nuisance and sometimes it's almost impossible. This can be a huge issue when it comes to knowledge dissemination, especially to the general community. So part of this initiative is the Open Science Framework, which is a free open source web app that connects and supports the research workflow, allowing researchers to effectively collaborate document, archive, share, and register their projects, materials, and data. Two key reasons for this push to make science more transparent and accessible are replication and things like the file drawer problem. For those who are in an honors program at Kwantlen, you've probably recently discussed current issues with replication in psychological science. Recently, Researchers have found that there are lots of studies that are not replicable. For example, the Open Science Collaboration sought to replicate 100 experimental and correlational studies published in psych psychology journals where 97% of the original studies had significant results, but they found that only 36% of the replications had significant results. The initial results could be for a few different reasons, such as pure chance due to the sample, or poor practice of the researchers. There's such an incentive to publish novel research that it's really hard to get any resources to replicate any of it. Additionally, the pressure to publish in many institutions means that sometimes researchers feel like the only way they can get published to move up in their career is to do things like alter their hypotheses before publishing, or even fudge the numbers a little bit to show significant results. So some of this problem is due to the competitiveness of getting things published. Journals will often only accept novel and significant findings, which can be an issue. For example, say someone has an idea for a research study. They come up with a research question, can't find anything in the published literature, and so they plan and conduct the study, and perhaps spend a year or two or three doing it, but then come up with non-significant results. If they try to publish it and it gets rejected, it will often just get filed away and never addressed again. While this is perfectly normal and can be very useful uh, to ask these questions with non-significant results so that you can build on it, um, it can cause an issue if a bunch of researchers end up asking the same question without knowing uh, that it's been asked before and have, having the opportunity to expand in different directions because they don't know others have already tested this. This is a very ineffective use of resources. So the Open Science Collaboration came up with one potential solution to this problem, pre-registration. Essentially, pre-registration is the act of publicly stating what you will be studying before you start collecting data. You basically plan out your entire study, listing research questions, hypotheses, methods, and analysis plans before running your study and then actually following this plan or clearly state where you deviated and why. This is to ensure studies are conducted as planned to resolve some of the issues that I mentioned before about changing hypotheses to show significant results. As more people pre-register their studies on OSF, uh, OSF becomes a repository for studies that have been conduct conducted. This is a good place to go if you're not sure if a question has been asked before. And it sounds like it's very tedious and it's an extra step in doing research, but in reality, it really helps you think through your study. A lot of what's required for pre-registration is also required for things like grant applications and REB. So while it is a little bit more in-depth and another step, it's very helpful for helping you think through your entire study to make sure you are collecting useful data. So now I'll go through the steps of pre-registering a study. First thing first, you need an account. I won't go through how to create an account, but you can link it to your ORCID account, which I recommend you have one of those if you don't already, or you can sign up through email. Once you're logged in, on your OSF homepage, you can click Create New Project. 
You can now enter in the base metadata fields to start working on your research project on, on OSF. These can be edited later, so don't worry about knowing what needs to be there right away. This includes the project title, the storage location, uh, you can change this to Canada, a brief project description, and if you've already built a project in OSF before, you can use this as a template, but if you haven't, then you can just leave it blank. Now that you have your project, you have some options. You can start uploading files relevant to your project. You can build a wiki. You can start working on the pre-registration for the project. You can add contributors. And you can mess with some of the settings relating to the project. So now I'll start by adding some contributors. This can be done before or after you start building a wiki or pre-registration. So you can add two different types of contributors. There's bibliographic and non-bibliographic. Uh, bibliographic means they are cited, so they'll be one of the authors in the published project. And non-bibliographic means that they're not included in the citation. So you can click on Add uh, to search for people who have an account. Once you've found who you're looking for, you as the administrator can decide what rights to give the contributor. So you have three options, there's read and write, read only, or full administrative rights. Once they've been added and the permission has been set, they're now able to edit the project's wikis, files, registration, and, and potentially uh, add other contributors if they have the right uh, administrative rights. So if you add wikis to your project, you also have the option to give them access to whichever ones they need access to. This is because you can add people as contributors to only specific components of the project or the project as a whole. Okay, so now that that's set up, I'll get into the actual pre-registration itself. The registration tab will show you any published registrations for this project. You can also see any draft registrations if you've started one already or you can click New Registration to bring up a list of pre-registration templates. So here's a list of templates that come up. You can go to this link here and see each of the templates in detail. You can also see on the list that there are templates for after you've collected data, but if, you're, if you haven't collected data yet, the common ones that are used are the first and last one, OSF pre-registration and pre-registration in social psychology. Once you choose your template, you can click on Create Draft, and from there you can edit the metadata that you inputted in the first screen. Here, all the contributors can work together in real time to write and edit the pre-registration from their own accounts. As you can see, for this template there are nine different pages that you have to go through, which seems like a lot, but not everything may be required for your specific study. And you'll also have most or all of it done for your proposal, any grant applications, and your ethics. Uh, and if not, you should have been thinking about a lot of this information anyways. Once you've completed it and are ready to submit, uh, you can click on register, and then you'll be done. So a common question is, can you edit your pre-registration after you've submitted it? The answer is no, you can't. Because, as you can imagine, that defeats the purpose of having an unaltered digital record of your study. However, there is a workaround for this if you really need to make some changes. Basically, you make a new one and link it to the other one. I'll show you how to do that now. So from the home page, when you're logged in, you can click at the tab that says My Projects, and then click on the appropriate project for the pre-registration that needs to be changed. That will open up the project's main page. From there, click on Registrations, and now you can make a second pre-registration with all of the corrected information. In the very first text box of the pre-registration, you can include something along the lines of this. This is a revised pre-registration relating to the previous pre-registration published on this date under the same project name. See this link. Due to whatever reasons, the following changes were made. So the last thing I'll talk about very briefly is the project settings. Here you can uh, create a view only link, control access to comments from the public, uh, enter a redirection link to a formal web page, such as if you're in a research lab, you can add affiliations and branding if needed, and you can also delete the project. 
but also note this will not delete any published pre-registration. It will only delete any wiki pages you've created and files you've uploaded outside of the pre-registration. If you have questions about pre-registration at any point, feel free to contact your research supervisors, librarians at your institution, or email OSF directly. Thank you for watching this video. For more lectures, workshops, and tutorials, follow Kwantlen Psychology Society on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram.